script is probably no one. It's my first video. So this video is probably gonna be a little different than all the rest of my videos. Maybe we'll see, but I think so. Hopefully you can hear me. Okay. I don't usually record with my phone very often, but I think it's easier for this. So in general, I wanted to make a channel. It's not because there's not plenty of who knows how many thousands or something of other channels that talk about the same stuff, but I don't really have anyone that I know of. Two things. One is that I just want to share this because I feel like it's important and <clears throat> most, not that I can't talk at all about what is happening, but for various reasons, for various reasons, things are, uh, people, I can't really talk about it. People are tired of hearing it. I'm someone that takes in a lot of information. I work at home and I can watch a lot of things and listen to a bunch of things. And I take in a lot of information and I share a lot of it, but only so many people can handle <laughs> that kind of thing, which I totally understand. And I'm sorry if I'm not looking right. I know the camera is actually here. It's very difficult for me to focus on a little dot. So I will try to. <laughs> as much as I can, but I know it will be difficult. Um, so anyways, it's just, you know, like a lot of other people in the whole, I guess, prepping or preparing or just seeing what's happening. And I don't actually, I'm not a prepper. I literally didn't even have much, anything of a pantry <laughs> until the end of last year. So you know, except for just your normal little things, but not anything anyone would call a pantry. I've never been like that. I've just kind of go with the flow kind of person. So I'm going to talk in this first video, really. I want to get to it more because I know I'll, I just ramble, ramble, and it'll just be a forever long thing. And I, you know, I know it's going to be long enough without me rambling forever. So anyways, in general, I just want to talk about all this stuff that's happening because one, I think people who want to know, you know, there's plenty of channels out there that talk about all this stuff, you know, but it, so part of it's for that. Part of it is just, I need to talk about it and there's no one else to talk to about it in my life. So, um, yeah. So, and I'm kind of in a really weird scenario and I don't really, I was really debating, like, do I even, do I do a faceless YouTube? Do I not? Because you know, t to me, it's clearly obvious that if you're talking about anything about having things <laughs> collected in your house, that that's dangerous. Or, I mean, it can be dangerous. So right now where I live, it's not dangerous. Um, but, uh, you know, I live in Midwest, small area. Like it's, it's nothing like what's happening everywhere else yet, yet. Um, so anyways, okay, so I'm just going to get all into it. So it's weird for me because this is just not how I've ever been. I kind of like, yeah, I shop once a week pretty much, but I also hate cooking. I just don't, <laughs> I mean, I know how and I do it. I just really don't like it. So a lot, of, so I would just eat out a lot as in like, you know, get food, not necessarily go somewhere always, but get food somehow. So I, and I prefer that. And I know people love home cooked meals and that's just not me. Like, I mean, it's fine, but honestly, if you ask me, tell me you'll cook me a meal or we can go to Applebee's or something. I'll be like, let's go to Applebee's. <laughs> it's just how I am. So <laughs> anyways, um, it's kind of strange for me to have anything and I'm sure it's also weirding out people in my life cause the, the, I'm not like that. So, um, and I don't have enough, like I am so behind in what I think, what I see 
And what's interesting, I guess, I mean, well, interesting to me, but is it's not that I didn't see it. A lot of it really has to do with afford, like, can I afford it? I don't, like I said, a very unique circumstance when it comes to money and living and all this kind of stuff. So, and I'm not going to get into it, but anyways, it's just different than most people. So, um, anyways, I, but I take a lot of information in, so I see all this stuff and then I'm going to get into this other part of the whole thing. Sorry for the crazy lighting change. Um, <laughs> I cannot get my computer to not go sleep mode. It doesn't matter if I put it on no sleep mode. It still doesn't. It drives me nuts. Okay. So anyways, <laughs> but it's better to have the light like that. So, um, okay. So we're already six minutes in and I'm talking about nothing. Okay. So, <laughs> oh man. Okay. So the thing is, is that until... December of last year, I was super, nothing like anyone that would be thinking about preparing or seeing the writing on the wall, let's say. Um, I was basically, for lack of a better word, pagan. Uh, I was astrologer, tarot reader, all of that kind of stuff. Um, and the whole story is a lot longer, but the short story is around 2020 and n yes, related to what was going on, but also n not related to what was going on. So it's not like I was like, we're all going to die. And then I, you know, had a come to Jesus moment, though it was that, but it wasn't because of that. Uh, it wasn't because of the sickness or anything, um, <laughs> which I know I'm not going to talk about. And another thing is not being able to say certain things on here, which is frustrating because I don't know all the things. I mean, I know enough just from watching other channels, but I don't really know all of them. So hopefully I won't say anything that I'm not allowed to say. So I'm probably just going to tread very carefully with stuff because I don't know everything that you can and can't say. And so if I think it's a possibility. I will use euphemisms and, you know other things like that, like the sickness. So <laughs> anyways, um, so during about a year and a half, like say like summer, late, late summer, 2020 and till December was like this weird, very strange to me conversion <laughs> to Christianity. Um, I grew up with it and I never liked it. I never was it. I went to a Christian school for part of my life. I hated it. Like it just, it's an interesting story maybe, but, but so it's not that I didn't know anything. I knew plenty. I just didn't believe it and it never made sense and I never got it. Nothing ever seemed real. I, I mean, it just, it wasn't me. So, um, I mean, I was heavily into astrology and everything. And I want to just touch on that for a second because I saw a lot of stuff from astrology too. So I saw a lot of things that were coming up and happening since probably around 2016 and 17. Um, and I knew now specifically, like actually specifically this, well, last year and then sp this year too, there's a lot of astrology stuff going on. That's really big for the U S specifically. I'm in the U S so I'm going to kind of talk U S specific, but not always. So in general for the world too, but there was very specific, there is specific U S things happening as well. And so I knew things that were going to come. The difference is, is that I thought it was good. <laughs> um, so, you know, Without being an anarchist, I was one, as in I wasn't, like, affiliated with anything, but that is what I just, when I actually read what anarchy was, I was like, oh, that's me. I get, that's, that's what I, I've never fit anywhere politically, and so I always was like, ah, I'm just, like, too far, I'm so far left, I'm off the board, um, and, which is true, but, uh, yeah, so then I found out what anarchy was, and general, what the real terminology is. And that's what I was like, that's what I've always been like. That's what I've always thought. That's what I've always believed. 
like my whole life and I'm talking since a child and it's not like anyone taught me that. It's just how I, how I was. So anyways, it's a huge changeover. So, um, but I wanted to touch on that because it does, it's interesting because there's just so many patterns and I kept seeing all these, you know, astrology is patterns and other things are patterns too. Um, and, but a lot the Bible is like full of patterns and, you know, it really started actually with, if anyone knows of Jonathan Pajot, um, and his symbolic world stuff, because it actually made Christianity, not just like a book that's like, or like a, you know, go to church, be a good person, you know, you're going to go to hell or heaven, yada, yada. Like not that like bland nothingness that was just like, you can and can't do this. And that's what it seemed like. That I realized I was like, where is all this Christianity that he's talking about? And I understand he's not Protestant. And I think it does matter. Um, in the fact that I wouldn't have been able to hear anything if it wasn't that. So because he wasn't, and I had no idea any, I didn't even know anything about Orthodox. I honestly knew Orthodox Jews. I didn't even know there was such a thing as Orthodox Christian really. So maybe I'd heard it, read it somewhere, but nothing that I knew what it was. I actually had to look it up when he said it. And I was like, what is this? (laughs) So, um, And I knew of Catholic and I watched a lot of Catholic stuff and, uh, but I didn't have any opinion of Catholics because I didn't really know any growing up or anything. So anyways, all of that, you know, not that I'm any of that, but so the long story short, the end of 2021 is when I became a Christian, but, um, you know, I just, it's still the patterns. Like I still just see the patterns. So Part of what convinced me was all this stuff that's happening is like in times, just like straight out of the book. And I was like, whoa, that's weird. <laughs> so, and no, I don't actually think, I really don't. And I know a lot of people do, but I don't think that what's happening is the real deal. Like, I don't think the actual horses are riding yet. What I think is that it is like all the patterns in the Bible. And when I say pattern, use that however you want, but like the, all of the things that happened or the prophecies and everything, which are so many, they all were almost maybe all of them. I mean, I'm still new, so I don't know, but I know plenty of them were fulfilled multiple times and some are still going to be fulfilled. Like as in they already were in one way and they're going to happen again. So it's interesting because it's just like this, like almost like a, a shadow, you know? So, and everything kind of just stacks up, which is a lot of what astrology was too. And so that's why, that's how I connected with it. And like, I get it. And, um, so first I wanted to say that in Revelation, in Revelation 6, when it talks about, uh, which I have the Bible here, um, and this is King James Version. I mean, it's just the one I have <laughs> around me right now. But I'm just going to kind of skim. But when they talk about, so the different horses, and I can see the pattern of it all happening. And on the one hand, it's kind of convenient because you kind of know what's going to happen next. Um, on the other hand, it's also like, how bad is it going to be? Is this the real deal or is it not? I don't think so. And I'm unconvinced on the rapture for any specific time period or maybe at all. I don't know. Um, I attend, you know, I was kind of taught like pre-trib is most likely, but we don't really know, but it's definitely going to happen at some point. And at this point I'm reading and all the reading I've done so far, um, by the way, I am reading the Bible straight through, but I'm only in De- Deuteronomy. So, <laughs> um, obviously I've read pieces, but like, as far as my straight through reading, I'm still in Deuteronomy. Um, <laughs> so, you know, it's not like I've read the whole thing or anything. Um, but anyways, I just, and I'm not teaching anything. Cause again, I'm new. I don't really know anything. This is just the patterns that I see. So to me, so the first horse and, and I saw, this is uh six, two revelation six, two. And I saw and behold a white horse and he sat on him and he that sat on him had a bow and a crown was given unto him and he went forth conquering and to conquer. 
Now, what's interesting is I do, there's a lot of people who say something about, that I've seen online talk about the crown is actually like Corona and like Greek or something, but I looked it up and it's not, so I don't know where that came from. But um, anyways, I, what's interesting is I don't necessarily, it doesn't talk about like arrows. It does, I mean, yes, you get caught, you got to look at all these, like where these words come from, how they've changed over time and everything. But to me, if you take away the idea of what the sickness was as being the sickness and not to diminish the people who died from it, because obviously people died. But in general, if you step back from the um, whole emotion of the whole thing, it's like a 1% sur- um, death rate, which is like nothing. It's, it was not a pandemic. I don't know. That was crazy. Uh, it really wasn't that bad. It could have been way worse. <laughs> so to me, what I saw though was the power grab. So the whole world just moved, which has never happened ever, which is part of, you know, the end time stuff. I mean, clearly we're setting up for the beast system, but the, the whole world just moved in lockstep and each country, you know, got so far, like, you know, some went off the rails, like Australia, sorry, Australia, that was... Sorry, guys. I'm glad I don't live there, but (laughs) I, yeah, it just, some places went crazy in Canada. Um, you know, they tried here. Luckily so far we've pushed back enough. You know, I don't think it's going to last. Um, I think right now it's okay. There's definitely some pushback. We'll see how it goes, but anyways, one of the things is that basically it was like something someone, not someone, but probably really a group, a company, multiple companies, you know, some of the three letter (laughs) word groups. And I don't mean the CIA or anything, you know, um, I don't know how much I can say starts with a W ends with an F, um, (laughs) things like that. We're trying to take power, like, holy cow and pretty hidden too. Uh, but not that hidden. What's interesting is I saw, because I was in fringe land my whole life, I just saw these conspiracy theories that I had seen over time. I like a good conspiracy, but it's not like my life or something. But I, so I knew of a lot of things. Like I said, it taken a lot of information. It's just like my personality or something. So, uh, there was just so much like, coming true. And then eventually things were being called conspiracies that were not, uh, that were clearly coming true within like, you know, first it was like months, then it was, you know, years, there was like months and it was weeks. And it was like, what is happening? Three days (laughs) or something. Um, it was just so many things. So it was almost like someone was conquering, conquering as in not a nation, not an army, not like, but a group of people of some sort were basically, it seems like trying to conquer the world by taking control and power and consolidating, right? So to me, it does fit. Now, do I think it's this actual? No, I think it's a shadow, like I said, a pattern. And so then the next one, and when he had opened the second seal, this is verse three, I heard the second beast say, come and see. And there went out another horse that was red and power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard, oh, sorry, I should stop at that part. Okay. So the second one, uh, clearly is what's the conflict going on. And one of the things is though, it's pretty small, right? It's not another world where war yet. It's not, hopefully never. It's not. I don't know. It's, you know, it's bad there. And I feel bad for all the people involved in that. But it's not huge yet. But what has it done? It has definitely taken peace. uh, Because people are just, even just about it, even just talking about it, each sides here, other countries, there's just this like clash going on. People are trying to get in and out of power positions because of it. Everything is blamed on it. Like it's taking peace. 
Again, a shadow, not the real thing, I don't think. Then um, the third one, and when he had opened the third seal, which is where I believe we're at right now, I heard the third beast say, come and see, and I beheld, and lo, a black horse, and he sat on and he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four beasts say, A measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny. And see thou hurt not the oil and the wine. Interestingly enough, because of that conflict, there is... I'm so bad at looking at this, sorry. <laughs> looking at myself. <laughs> so, and there... And because of that, what is that place? It's affecting specifically wheat and barley. Okay, that's coincidence. <laughs> um, you know, and now the hurt, not hurt the oil and the wine. I mean, whatever that means. Does it mean really literally? Does it mean, oops, I haven't heard much about wine. I have heard some oil stuff, but it's more like some countries that are, I think Indonesia or whatever a while ago said, you know, um, we're keeping we're, we're not exporting any oil or I think it was, uh, palm oil. Um, that was a couple months ago. I don't know. I look at so much. It's hard to say the timing, but about a month or so ago, I think maybe April. So, um, but I haven't heard anything again about like crops for those things. So I'm curious to see how the crops for, for, you know, the grapes and like the olives and other things that are that they make into oil. I'm really curious how that's going to go. Now, obviously, coin, corn, I can't speak, is being affected. Um, so any corn oil will be. But I don't know. But, you know, th then some people say really that what that means because of the penny is not really penny. It's, you know, a day's wage or something. And if you look at... Uh, I actually looked this up and how much a denarius, which is the original way of saying it, would be now. Apparently, it's about $20 worth. I'm a little surprised, but I think that's because it relates to silver and silver is pretty manipulated. Uh, actually, very manipulated. There's no way silver should be where it's at right now. That's pretty ridiculous. Um, but that's a whole other thing. So <laughs> anyways... Um, yeah. So I, I don't know. And I would say, you know, what's happening is the people being affected first are all of these smaller countries and they're just going to, it's going to get worse because right now we're in the inflation part. But this is, is the third horse is basically inflation. So then the next one, which we'll be coming up on, which is the scary one that so many people are talking about right now. Right. Um, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, come and see. And I looked and behold, a pale horse and his name that sat on him was death and hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with beasts of the earth. Okay, so hunger, so famine was used instead of hunger, um, not King James. So, um... Sword, hunger, death, which I assume just means people will just die, like maybe heart attacks or something. I don't know. Um, and with beasts. Now that's interesting. So I'm interested to see how these animal attacks are going to be starting. Um, <laughs> so, I mean, I'm not interested, but it's indication. So I think I, I am looking out for when am I going to start seeing, because clearly that's when the food shortages are going to start, start because the third beast is definitely about inflation and the cost of food, which does have to do with shortages. But when we really get into it, then we're going to be actually people starving, which is starting to happen in other countries. Here, we're still just inflation. We'll see how it hits here. Because that oil and wine, the wealth thing, I mean, technically, we're like one of the wealthiest countries. So we'll see how that ends up going. I don't know. That could literally just mean like it's just expensive here and we don't actually have extreme shortages. I don't know. But, um, but all this other stuff of people just dying also obviously with sword, which would be, you know, could be war, but could also just be violence, which clearly is ramping up. I have not heard anything yet about animal attacks. So I'm watching for that because I think that will fulfill part of the pattern. So, and I don't think that'll happen until, you know, probably the fall. We'll see. 
I'm trying to figure out the timing on, not the real timing, but like just kind of see how long this is like, how long is something lasting until kind of the next step is showing. Again, I don't think it'll be a bad, as bad as it will be when this really happens. I think this is actually, I don't know, but I think it will be worse than what's happening right now. So I think this will actually be worse. So right now, I think what we're preparing for is fine. But I think it's just going to be uncomfortable, you know, just like 2020 was, just like this, this expenses, gases and all that. Anyways, um, you know, and then, and then we go, I'm not going to go on with this for the next horses because the next one isn't even here yet. Um, <laughs> and you know, maybe I'm totally wrong again. I'm, I'm new. I, I don't know. Um, <laughs> so don't take my word for anything. I just want, you know, think about it. Um, and something that I heard today, I just want to talk about related to food, not in the U S yet, but it's freaky. So in Norway, there's this article, uh, I'll post a link in the description. Um, if you want to look at it, it's from life in Norway.net is the blog, um, or the website. Okay. So Norway to track, sorry, we get closer to the mic here, uh, Norway to track all supermarket purchases. And, and you're like, okay, well, of course they track things already. Let's be honest, like your credit cards do, you know, if you use a card or a debit card or whatever, I'm, you know, the companies themselves do, but it's different than the, than the actual government. Um, and who knows what's happening here? Snowden. <laughs> things are always happening that none of us know. Um, but okay. So statistics, Norway wants to statistics is supposed that's their explanation for now. It's always something innocuous. Uh, Statistics Norway wants to receive several million daily receipts from food stores, signaling a new era in state data collection. Privacy advocates and the supermarkets themselves are unhappy. People living in Norway are used to big government, but the latest news coming out of Oslo is a surprising new step down the road of data collection, and not everyone is happy with it. Well, I hope not. Uh, (laughs) Statistics Norway, the SSB, (laughs) it's such a... Why are these weird three letter names are just weird. Anyways, is the state owned entity responsible for collecting, producing and communicating statistics related to the economy, population and society at national, regional, and local levels? Because everything about an individual living in Norway is linked to their, <laughs> I'm not going to probably say this right, but something like Foydelsnumer, uh, birth number, uh, SSB already knows where you live what you earn, and what's on your criminal record. However, according to a report by NRK, they now want to know where you shop and what you buy. Um, SSB has ordered Norway's major supermarket chains, and they list a few of them, uh, to share all their receipt data with the agency. Uh, The payment processor, NETS, is the payment processor that is responsible for 80% of transactions, will also need to provide data. Of course, the stores aren't happy about this, too. I mean, that's just more work for them and cost also, of course. More work is more money. Um, and a link between a payment transaction made with a debit card and a grocery receipt enables SSB to link a payment transaction and receipt for more than 70% of grocery purchases. And then it goes on. And and it's like, why? And it says, why is it doing this? Um, cl- they claim they want less time consuming ways of collecting and analyzing household consumption statistics in order to inform tax policy. <clears throat> Sorry for the dog barking. Social assistance and child allowance. So, oh, we're helping you. Sure. (laughs) I'm sure actually that is what they want to do. Like, I don't think everything is a straight up lie. I just think that once you do that, then it's just going to be, someone's going to be like, whoa, look at all this data we have. Let's do all these things. You know, the least harmful of those things is to sell you stuff you know, and that will definitely happen somehow. Um, you know, they'll make money off you. Okay. That's the least of the problems. You know, that's just annoying. Um, you know, your data could be lost. There's just more data breach possibilities, which is just ridiculous now. And, you know, the government, they're not going to want to, you know, they're never going to give it up once they get it. So anyways, I, I don't, I don't know from this. It seems like they're not actually, they haven't, 
done it yet. They're just trying to f- trying to make it happen. Uh, but yeah, so because it does say both privacy advocates in the retail industry themselves are unhappy with the proposal. So, you know, but I wouldn't be surprised if it happens to me. I'd be more surprised if it doesn't happen because clearly we're moving into the beast system is what it seems like. So, and that is what, that's one of the things that will be happening. Would it come here? Yeah, I don't know why it wouldn't. Would it be government related? Probably not at first. It would be like Amazon or something like that. So anyways, that's just one little thing that I read today that I thought was a little disconcerting. Um, and I know it's not US based, that is out of the country, but still, um, you know, where clearly where things are happening now somewhere else, it's just all affecting and it, it has for a long time. Um, you know, globalism and all that. So, okay. This is a super long video. I apologize. Um, in general, I think what I'm, what I plan, we'll see how it goes, but what I plan to do is to be talking more about things that I hear and read and stuff and keeping people up to date on things that are happening related to food and stocking. And I'm, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a prepper. I literally have never canned anything in my entire life. I do wish now I had done that with my grandma. Um, (laughs) and my grandma cannot do that now. I mean, she's still alive, but it's not going well right now. Um, but anyway, so I'm just like learning everything from scratch. So right now I'm stocking basically already stocked food because, you know, I'm still working on a possible three month stock, let alone like I'd like to do a year for me. I don't live alone, but no one else is interested. So, um, it's just me doing it for myself. Ho- hopefully I'll get a year. I also just have this room. So, um, I can only do it here in this one room, this tiny bedroom. So, you know, we're seeing, I'm, I'm doing what I can. I did get a, a nice shelf, which I should have got this just in general forever ago. Cause so much more room to put stuff on, but, um, I still have to go through everything. You can't see my room cause it's like horrible right now because man, there's just like bags of food. Cause I went shopping yesterday, like everywhere. And I'm going to say, I live in the Midwest in a very pretty small town. I mean, technically the, the amount of people or the space or whatever is not super small, but it's not any, it's not like, you know, a big city at all or anything. It's, it's a, let's say a medium small. (laughs) And so everything that hits everywhere else is like slower to hit us. And, um, but people are definitely waking up here too, because I was just at the store and for the first time, um, I was at a Meyer, and for the first time there were limits on all of the canned goods. So first I was at the canned meats and they all had limits and I was limits of four each for each kind, which isn't too bad, but you know, it's still telling. And it said specifically because there is a higher than normal, um, interest in people buying these. So, I expect to see more of that happening because clearly people are starting to realize what the heck is going on or they're just realizing like, ah, food just keeps going up and I need to buy it ahead of time while it's still, you know, cheaper for the moment. Um, our gas is crazy like everyone else's, but like, honestly, I'm a little surprised it's as high as it is because it's not even, it's above the average now, which surprises me for what state I'm in. So, anyways, um, (laughs) Yeah. So anyways, uh, thanks for anyone who watches. I know there'll be like basically no one probably for this first one, but I'm just going to keep making them. And I don't really have a plan of how many a day or whatever. We'll just see how much time I have, what I can do and so forth. I mean, I have good enough time. I can make time for it. So yeah. Um, thanks for watching. Bye.